Welcome to the Daily Connoisseur Seek Out the Arts Christmas Special for 2023. Hello everyone, Jennifer here, and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. This is the Christmas special, and we are going to dive into my favorite Christmas painting, a beautiful Christmas poem, and I'm going to share a hymn with you that will absolutely blow you away. As always, the ad revenue from this video will be donated to Inner City Arts, which is a wonderful organization that provides valuable arts education to children in underserved communities. I will leave information for Inner City Arts down below. And as always, I would like to thank the Sheik Society for bringing us this wonderful series. The Sheik Society is my private membership group here on YouTube. I do one video every week for the Sheik Society. It's usually a vodcast, but once a month we also go live and get to talk to each other. It's a wonderful community. We also have a pen pal program and nearly 1,000 of you are writing to each other all across the world, which is pretty amazing. Membership is only $1.99 a month to join the Sheik Society. We also have upper tiers and they get a mention in one video a month and you are seeing them here. Make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video where I share the elegant connoisseurs with you. Let's begin by discussing the painting that we are featuring in Seek Out the Arts today. It has a Christmas theme to it, of course, and it is called Merry Christmas by Viggo Johansson. Viggo Johansson was one of Denmark's most important painters of the 1800s. He was born January 3rd, 1851, and he died December 18th, 1935. He belonged to a group called the Skagen Painters, who met in the summer months in the fishing village of Skagen, which was in the northernmost part of Denmark. The Skagen painter's work often resembled that of the French Impressionists, and Vigo himself was of course influenced by the preeminent Impressionist Claude Monet. And we can definitely see that in Merry Christmas, which was painted in 1891. Now, I looked up commentary on this painting and there really isn't that much. It's one of those paintings that just looks pretty, you know? It's, it's very pleasant. I could stare at this painting and I have done for a long time. It's in a few Christmas books that I have. It's a very famous painting, if not the most famous painting, which represents more modern Christmases, even though this was painted in 1891. So anyway, I don't have um, professional commentary to share with you. I only have my own <laughs> observations as always. But the first thing that stands out to me is the play on light in this painting. The painting shows a family, possibly some extended family, because there's a lot of children there, all holding hands, around the Christmas tree. And you see the little children. I love the reaction on each child, even if their back is turned to you, like the little girl in the front, she's just leaning back looking at that tree, awestruck. One of the children looks very contemplative, the little one in white. Most of them look like they have a sense of awe. Some of them are like fidgeting. It's like they can't wait. I think it's wonderful. And then you look at the adult, clearly this looks like it's the mother of the family. She's not looking at the tree, she's looking at the children. This says so much because for me, one of the greatest things about the Christmas season is seeing it through my children's eyes. They are so excited. They love looking at the tree and the decorations and you could just feel that, that energy that they have that's palpable. So it's like while the children are awestruck by the tree, the mother's looking down at her children, just really enjoying their reaction. It is nighttime and the light is emanating from the Christmas tree. There's candles on the Christmas tree, which have always made me nervous because of course back then they did not have electric lights. So they did put candles on their trees and I was looking into the history of that. And this is what I found. This information is from history.com. So Germany is credited with starting the Christmas tree tradition as we now know it. In the 16th century, sources recorded that devout Christians were bringing decorated trees into their homes. Some of them built Christmas pyramids out of wood and they decorated them with evergreens and candles. Many people believe that the 16th century Protestant reformer Martin Luther first added lights to the tree. 
So according to a common version of the story, walking home one winter evening, Luther was awed by the stars twinkling amidst the evergreens. To recapture the scene for his family, he erected a tree in the main room and wired its branches with lighted candles. Of course, this was also very dangerous, and so there were also a lot of house fires because of this practice. But I love the play on light that Johansson uses in this. The candles are lighting up the tree so spectacularly. And when you zoom in on the tree, you can see the ornaments that are so special. It looks like there's a few dolls in there. It looks like there's some tinsel and some beads and perhaps little playful things that the children would definitely gravitate to. I always like to look around at the home decor, of course, and there are some beautiful lamps and flower arrangements there's a glass lamp there that it looks like an old-fashioned now it would be antique lamp they have high vaulted ceilings there's a tall statue bust in the other corner and the lady standing in the corner could possibly be a governess you get the impression that this is a well-to-do family I just love that they're holding hands and that Johansson captures this moment one of the most impressive things as I mentioned about the painting is the play on light and shadow this is clearly taking place in the evening yet there's an illumination taking place those dancing shadows shadows that you get inside your home at night and I just love this painting. It brings me so much joy to look at it and I hope that you enjoyed it as well. Before we get to the poetry reading, I want to recommend the musical selection for this month. As many of you know, my favorite Christmas hymn is O Holy Night. And just when I think I've found the greatest version of it, I find another one. And this time it really is <laughs> the greatest version of O Holy Night I have ever heard. I am recommending a performance by Malachi Bayo and Alad Jones. It's on Classic FM's channel. That's the radio station I always listen to when I'm in England. It's a wonderful station. And these two are performing Oh Holy Night. When you watch this, you will have chills almost the entire time. It's like their voices transcend human capabilities. It, they are angelic. Like you feel something very deep when you hear this hymn. And it is my favorite version right now. So <laughs> you have to listen to this. It's incredible. And now for the poetry segment. I'm going to be reading Alfred Lord Tennyson's Ring Out Wild Bells. Alfred Lord Tennyson lived from 1809 to 1892, and this is one of my very favorite Christmas poems. Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new, ring happy bells across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind, for those that hear we see no more. Ring out the feud of rich and poor, ring in the redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes, but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right. Ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease. Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free, the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. Isn't that poem just so meaningful? This is not just a Christmas poem. This is very much so a New Year's poem as well. It's talking about ringing out the old and ringing in the new. And I think so many of us feel this at the end of the year. We all long for that reset to just take the good things from the year and move forward with hope and clarity and to leave all the bad things behind. 
This was a very challenging year for me. It was also a wonderful year. Many great things happened, but also the hardest thing uh, that I've ever gone through has happened, which was losing my dad. So I really feel this. It's about really moving into the new year with peace and hope. And I love that, ring in the thousand years of peace. Yes, I mean, I feel like how many of us are feeling like that right now? So this is such a beautiful poem and I hope that you enjoyed it. Now, there's a few videos left on The Daily Connoisseur this year. There's actually two videos left, I believe, and they are both poems written by me because you know I love writing poetry and it's one of my favorite things to do. So normally at the end of the year, I do an animated poem as a gift to the channel and we have done it again I'm working with Ruhama and we have a wonderful animated poem coming out. And then I have another incredible treat. This year we also did a live action poem. So I wrote a poem called The Dream and my editor Evan Gallagher and I shot it together. This poem I'm so excited for you to see. It's the first time I've ever done a live action poem. I'm so excited to share my poetry with you. I think poetry just reaches deep into the soul and it is such a beautiful luxury but also a necessity. So I really truly hope that you enjoyed Ring Out Wild Bells. And now it is my pleasure to share the elegant connoisseurs with you. They are the top tier in the Chic Society. The 90 Day Memoir Book, available now from Alan Watt and the LA Writers Lab. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop. Elaine Brisebois, certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Ashley Buffa, Freedom Mom's Smart Kids Chore System. Guy Blaze, author of Love Like the French, A Guide to Better Romance and Relationships. Dr. Kate Philbin, transpersonal psychologist and professionally certified life and executive coach. Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry. Louise Bromhead, psychologist author of Illness Recovery Wellbeing. Macondo Forever, Woven Placemats. Teresa Maples from Self Care Routine Cards. Alan Scottish Shortbread, Stern Brothers Custom Design and Fine Jewelry, Studio Duquesa Fine Art Branding and Stationery. And thank you to the following Catherine Ray, Anne Marie Ramsey, Ashley Diaz, Jenny Candelaria, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Henry, Juliette Keeler Labien, Karen Lynn Interior Design, Linda Eckloff, Maria Condor, and Moonshadow Welsh Ponies. Thank you so much to the Chic Society for bringing us these videos. I wanted to thank you all for your wonderful encouragement after I announced that I'm going to be Victoria Magazine's Writer in Residence for 2024. I will leave the link to subscribe to Victoria down below. I am so excited for this. I can't wait for you to read my essays. 2024 is going to be an amazing year. Thank you so much for joining us here for the finale of Seek Out the Arts. It has been a wonderful year. I would love to know what your favorite episode was. Which painting did you love the most that we discussed this year? Or what poem impacted you the most? Let us know in the comment section down below. All right, I will see you in the next two videos, which are my poems. I can't wait to share them with you. In the meantime, keep calm and remain classy, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.